Welcome to Arts Talk TV. We're putting a spotlight on creativity. Hi, I'm Karina Lawrence and welcome to Arts Talk TV. We're here at 3 Dank Street in Waterloo, Sydney, a versatile dance, performance and creative arts event space that provides high quality, state-of-the-art facilities at affordable prices. They also have some classes and workshops, so be sure to check out their website so you can see what's on and hire up these fantastic facilities. I am so excited to introduce you to our next guest, a renowned and dedicated mentor. She is responsible for creating and nurturing endless careers all around the globe. Please welcome to the show, the incredible Marie Walton Mahon. I'm delighted to be with you today. Thank you for the invitation. Absolute pleasure to have you on the show. You're best known as the founder and artistic director of Marie Walton Mahan Dance Academy, later moving into the National College of Dance, and most recently the founder and creator of the world-renowned progressive ballet technique, also known as PBT. PBT. Yes. So this beautiful facility is your baby. It is. Well, my son, yes. who is the managing director of Progressing Ballet Technique, thought that we needed a space for our workshops. We had a Sydney Dance Company in here for a couple of months because we've got the high ceilings for the rigging. The floor is sprung beautifully. The tarquette is, is spongy. Even Kylie Minogue came in to rehearse. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, so <gasps> wow. It's, it's exciting. Where did the obvious love of ballet start for you? My mum was one of 11. They couldn't wow. afford ballet. Mm -hmm. She always wanted to dance. So when I was three, she put me into the little local dance studio in Rutherford, Betty Walsh, oh, at wow. six. She said to my mum, I think it's time to maybe go on and do exams and more structure. She suggested that mum and dad enrol me in, down in Newcastle in Hobart Road with yes. Tessa Maunder. And I remember the beginning because we, we were more free dancing and then it was also structured. Yeah. So it took that love, but then um, the technique. And the discipline. Came, and the added, discipline yeah. and all of that. Yeah. By 10, I was like so hooked. It was my dream to I just be a ballerina. Okay, so your dance background and highlights, you've done the advance and solo seal examinations and you achieved honours in these RAD examinations. Then you were accepted as a full scholarship to study for 12 months at Rosella Hightower School in uh, Cannes, France. Yes. How old were you around? Uh, so I was just uh, 17 and a half. I'd only been as far as Queensland. My mother and father were very unhappy about this. Yeah. Yes. It was three yeah. weeks to get an aerogram, uh, seven weeks to get my Vegemite. Wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was important. important. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. And you couldn't just pick up a phone and call. There's a lot more help today, but there's also a lot more pressure. There's certain pressure on mm. young people today that I'd love to see people really stop and think. Yeah. That they're human. I'm, I'm sad to say the rise of anorexia is, is through the roof. The professionals that were dropped mm. after COVID because they're too, too stiff and do up. Because I am global, they can send emails through the website and I'm highly attached to the medical profession around the world and I know it's on the rise and I don't believe that students should be weighed in in front of their peers and they see so much on Instagram and they're paranoid a lot of them. The other thing that worries me is the amount of competitions today, the trophy chasing. You know when you go for that job they want to see you dance. They don't want to know how many trophies you have. Then it's part of development to yes. accept that maybe not the right company or the right job, whether it be, you know, commercial work or ballet. They've got to push on. So if they win, 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 they're so used to 
the yeah, hard expectations. to expectation it takes time and slow and low is sometimes the way to go to get there I love that <laughs> um, you know and and one of my you know I've got many catchphrases but <laughs> one of them is pure line doesn't have a measurement so true mm, quality over quantity and purity and uh, you know the the overstretching is is quite an epidemic do you know I had a parent email me that her daughter is having a double hip replacement at 14. Everyone's range is different. I don't think there's enough awareness of the spectrum of hypermobility. If they're on the high end of the spectrum yeah. and have ED, then the connective tissue falls away. You know, one uh, wonderful person that I've, I've mentored through PBT certification who was a dancer. Yeah. They didn't understand she was hypermobile, but in a wheelchair at 14. One of the most humble certifications I've ever done because she went out of the wheelchair down to the mat and was certified and she can do all the mat work. She's using her PBT certification to teach others with ED start to tear that connective tissue yeah. and it, it can cause a lot of digestive problems and you know this is why our YouTube channel Progressing Ballet Technique has a lot of um, educational chats the mm. medical field mm. because mm. it's it's not just me saying it the body's forever and dancers know when I went to see Don Quixote recently with the Australian Ballet no one had their legs over split. Yes. No one. Okay, let's go back then. You accepted a position yes. under the direction of Roland Petit. Roland Petit. Tell us about that experience. Oh, it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, uh, well, he created Carmen. Right. Which is wow. all over the world. Yes. He was very theatrical, choreographer. It was 1972. He said to us, we're going on tour to, to Paris, and we've commissioned Pink Floyd to write the score for our ballet. For 72, if you think, we were put in white unitards, yep. which was really not done back in 72. <laughs> yes, yeah. And the boys were bare chested and just white, radical Pink Floyd music that was very electric. We performed 33 performances at the Palais des Sports in Paris. We arrived to look where the orchestra kit is and, oh, Oh, they're up there on scaffolding and rings of fire and flames oh and, and it, it worked because it Literally, brought all the youth yes. back. West End Dance Company, was that done after your... Yes, my father had a heart attack and things were really bad, I had to help. I was young, super, super, super ambitious. So I thought, okay, I'll create my own. So I, I had this little group of dancers and uh, I got approved by the education to take them on tour to the schools. Then I found by doing that, the school that I started, that started to suffer because you know, it was too hard to juggle both. So I realized I needed to put everything into nurturing these little people. It really took to that first little person was on stage the genetic like for me to realize I'd left what I loved performing, but giving it to others gave me more pleasure. Yeah. Recently, I saw um, uh, Shani Spencer, who's principal with the Australian Ballet, and she was a student, you know, and, and I watched Jenna Roberts, her final performance in uh, Royal Birmingham Ballet of Juliet before she retired. And oh, you know, it's that. You've given them yeah. something. It's so rewarding yeah. and teaches me to understand that responsibility. You've tutored at uh, various vocational schools nationally. You were a big advocate with the Shaw Summer School in Sydney. I remember that being very renowned. Different students under the one roof to connect yes. with great teachers and tutors, obviously. Yes. And then you developed a board-endorsed course with the New South Wales Department of Education for students to be accredited in the following units, which was history of dance and anatomy. Well, there was 12 units of competency. You know, there, there was a stage where I worried that yep. 
students were leaving school young. Yes. Distance education. Realized that some of the parents were doing the assignments, and, you know, <laughs> mm. so they could spend more time yeah. at, on their craft. But I literally got up every morning at 4 a.m. Course, writing the units of competency, then having uh, had to employ a consultant to then put it into education terms. Yes. And had uh, a, a certificate three, a certificate four, a diploma. Now they have an advanced diploma they've added and quite possible overseas. Elise Frawley, who is still there, she was my assistant, but she's Brent's assistant wow. now. Yeah. Uh, she was also a registered school teacher. Okay. So I had a you know, her backup, Jenny Pickering, who we've just lost, also was amazing because we had to have a music module yeah. and yeah. Uh, she was the studio pianist and she helped with all that. And then we had to turn the whole institute, education institute, yeah. into an RTO, a registered training organisation. Like there was history of ballet, with ballet, so there was your practical and they had to write all their assignments. And 60% was the pass mark, so yeah. the bench was quite high. high. Yeah. And after the diploma, they had entrance to go into university Great. and could use it for 10 years. Oh, and yeah. I'm so pleased that next year, Dance Institute, which is an, an RTO, an education teachers program, are yep. going to be resident here. Oh my gosh. It's so yes. exciting. One of their uh, modules is going to be progressing ballet technique. Oh wow! So uh, you know everything comes together. I believe everything's for a reason. Your intentions behind teaching—that's uh, providing a positive and a rich learning environment for dance and uh, developing positive and supportive relationships with teachers and focusing on health and safety. So let's let's dive into that a little bit. Holistic training. You know, when I give the teachers workshops, it's not just about turnout. Yes. It's about everyone's personal best, mm -hmm. understanding not to compare them in the class because every child is different, yep. every range is different. Yeah. And it's just about them achieving their personal best. We guide them, yeah, we give them the important. wings, mm -hmm. but it's up to them to fly. I love that. Your philosophy is um, teaching dance contributes to health, safety and physical development of students. The teachers that come to the courses, um, from the feedback, they're, they're inspired mm. to give that gift. Mm. It's not just about learning to point your toe. Peeling everything apart and those early movement patterns are so important for them because mm. if they can't feel mm. what they're doing, mm. they mm. can't produce. So True. that's why uh, the progressing ballet technique starts non-weight bearing. The use of unstable balls yep. to, as props, yes. it gives them the guidance of their center. So it's teaching the child the awareness inside their body and talking to them about what they're feeling. If a student is going to stand up and do a changement batu, yeah. so they start to learn changement batu around 10, 11, mm -hmm. and they beat continually this way, instead of using their adductors and deep rotators, that muscle memory goes into the body that wrong is right. Yes. So standing up doing it wrong over and over is very hard to then rewind train that. yeah so we mm. train it on the top of the fit ball the ball is under their hip bones mm -hmm. so if they're doing it wrong the ball moves then you do that over and over till that trains the muscle memory take the ball away stand them up and it's like oh, i get this yeah so it's really assisting them to know and engage in the correct muscles. Exactly. With that technique. Yeah. Exactly. And those early movement patterns mm. of muscle memory yes. uh, is gold. And when I started teaching, I was very concerned about all the different body types, mm -hmm. the levels of turnout, yeah. the levels of range, knowing that body. So I, I then started to read anatomy books learn more and more about the body mm -hmm. because I felt a responsibility to every child Perfect. to reach their mm -hmm. personal best because yeah. flexibility without strength I believe is dangerous Absolutely. 
and strength without flexibility is also dangerous. This works because if you lay down and you go into a bridge and you do a développé devant, if the hips move, the ball moves. Yeah. And so instantly they, no, they self-correct. Yes. So it's like the child is teaching them, you give them the tools, but then they're teaching themselves. And I often see in the classes that they're, they're you know, completed their développé and then they'll put their hands and just straighten up. It wasn't till 2012 I was tutoring uh, a course in Sydney for the Royal Academy of Dance because yeah. I was an examiner and a tutor. Yes. I always had my football and I said to the teachers, don't teach the battery standing up. And it was those teachers that day that said, this makes sense. And yeah. I said, oh, I've been doing it for years. Yeah. And it was the teachers that said, please share this, all these exercises yeah, yeah. that teach, you know, your weight placement, your adage, your, your core strength, and it's all to music. And we use the correct hands and breathing because I had the music also composed. Our son, who, who was the tech genius, he made the little website and my husband said, well, we'll cut 500 DVDs and see and two months later he was ordering 2,000 and then 10,000 and then... Oh my gosh, and that <laughs> and was literally an international phenomenon. Yeah, and then in 2016, I was invited to present at the Onavon conference in Toronto. It was one of those conferences where hundreds of teachers came from all over the world. Yeah. I was on every day nine to 11 right. with progressing ballet technique. Yeah. Then I had a look at who was next door and I'm talking like judges of So You Think You Could Dance America, right. like big names, yeah. Lee Schwin Sin. And I was so humbled and overwhelmed. I was crying wow, yeah, because they couldn't fit them all in. My gosh. <gasps> they could not, they had to hire another studio when the balls were all inflated to put the balls overnight because there was just fit balls everywhere Goodness and me. teachers were coming up Incredible. to me afterwards and uh, said they, they traveled from South Africa to learn the program. You've taken a lot of risks throughout your career and that shows you know a very strong determination and dedication but you've always given back. You've given sponsorships to the International Association of Dance Medicine as well as the Queensland Ballet. We try and put sponsorship out there. Yeah. Uh, to wh wherever we can. In fact, we've employed someone now that just looks after sponsorship. We feel we want to give back and, and create opportunities. And create for opportunities. You were awarded an Order of Australia, which is an OAM, recognising outstanding Australian citizens for outstanding achievements and services. Like, what I'm an so honour and a privilege. So humble. I remember I was down here giving a teacher's course and this email came, I had no idea, would I accept this award and I was like, what? Uh, you were appointed the International Examiner um, and granted life membership for the Royal Academy of Dance, teaching with honours. I loved examining. Yes. Um, and that it took me all over the world. I love travel and, and I've got so many friends that are examiners and uh, I did this for 12 years. Incredible. So exciting to see how different culture yep. um, affects musicality and uh, expression and interpretation. And to me, the most important job now is reaching the teachers because helping the teachers helps the students. Absolutely. So PBT is a global program. It's taught in more than 40 countries and is supported by a team of 26 employees. That's huge from a business perspective. The program has been adopted by over 6,000 schools and it's still increasing daily and has a social media following of over 330,000 people. My son is very much like me and driven yeah. and passionate. Yeah. Um, I worry how much work he does because this is global. Yeah. So 
a lot of the things that come in that he has to address is during the night. So it's also been recently implemented into more professional schools, such as the Orlando Ballet, and is also being used by professionals uh, from the New York City Ballet as well. So we have um, principal dancer with New York City Ballet, yeah. principal with the Australian Ballet, principal with Scottish Ballet. So we've got quite a, an extensive ambassador program now. It's incredible. Seeing the professionals talking about PPT is so humbling. And now Orlando Ballet, they, they're so impressed with it. They do every, every morning, the beginning of their day starts with PPT five times a week. You've worked closely mentoring Kate Stanforth in the UK in adapting the PBT program for those with disabilities. Some were in wheelchairs, still wow. um, able to do the resistant bands and work their upper body. Yeah. And then some of them were able to move to the fit ball with a ring around it. And then some got strong enough in the core to take the ring away. Yeah. And so if we can develop a core for those, that's going to help their Everything. well-being, yeah. their general well-being. So true. Into you uh, supported and assisted uh, for Adam Blanche on the launch of the version of the PBT program for contemporary dance, which is called PCT. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Different logo. Yes. And progressing contemporary yes. technique. What he's done is is wonderful, and he was invited recently to teach this at a big conference in Portugal. It was our wonderful tutor for um, Asia, yes, who speaks Mandarin, Cantonese and English. Um, she said to me that um, the Chinese need a version for Chinese classical dance, right? right? Which um, she then studied their syllabi and brought out the, wow. and the composed music to match, which is all the very, you know, it's beautiful, but very authentic. For, for them because she said when she was delivering courses and the teachers were coming for China, that were learning Chinese classical dance were confused with the ballet terminology. Uh, very similar but yeah. the names and, yeah. and of course it's in Mandarin and Cantonese. And, um, um, you worked closely with the technical team and your official uh, physiotherapist on the PBT app also. Yes, yes we have um, over 600 exercises. Wow. Everything's been composed, matching it, the exercises, everything being re refilmed, giving the teachers their, the music to go yeah. with it. Yeah. Now, we've had it composed in, in piano, but my, my son being a musician, has been able to also add other instruments wow. to it. It's beautiful. The, yeah. Now, my job is analysing class plans. Some teachers can't fit into their whole schedule an hour class. I've got to analyse the class plans for 15 minutes, half an hour, three quarters of an hour and one hour. Yeah. Hypothetically, if we're training arabesque, which we start training arabesque from the little ones right through to the pre-professionals, mm. making sure every level of arabesque is in the right order so mm. they move into the mm. right class plan building. Yes. So that's all got to be done. And then I've worked with our physiotherapist on the muscle activation so that the teachers and students learn the anatomy that goes with it. So Purposefully it is to assist in, in healing of their bodies. I know I had that accident that's quite Yeah, public. tell us about that. My husband and I were on our e-bikes going to lunch. Whoops. And uh, he saw some friends and took a quick turn. But I'm not as confident with my e-bike on a quick turn. I hit the curb and uh, it threw me backwards, flat on my back. And um, I've never had an injury like that. Completely laterally fractured uh, my sacrum completely. Nerve damage right down my legs. I had, had a walker and I was shuffling. You know, they said, you know, you're 69. Then sent an occupational therapist because they wanted me to go to a rehab center because I'm 
walking with a walker and yeah. the first time in my life I really felt desperate. I was in a bit of a dumb place mm. because I wondered, are they Would right? You, yeah. Or yeah. I started the subjunior PPT in bed, exercises with the small ball, just moving my legs because my thought was, okay, my sacrum shattered, I have nerve damage, but if I let 10 weeks and I do nothing and I intend to go back to work, I'm going to have more injuries because yeah. of muscle waste. Yeah. So with the walker, I would every day, I do uh, calf raises and roll through the feet, holding on like a bar. And then I, I would lay in bed and do all the, the small ball work as a six year old. Yeah, right. Then I moved from the bed to the lounge, from the lounge to the mat, and three weeks after the check-in at the doctor's that I had to go to, I walked in without a walker and sat down because I couldn't sit. So I trained myself to sit with the ball against the wall, just bending and going up and down to build up enough strength in the quadriceps to be able to sit and take the pressure off. And all the footwork I did got rid of the nerve damage because this this was completely nerve shattered because I'm walking on glass and I'm not giving in. Now I've got more to do. Let's talk about this beautiful um, your next project. Fill us in. Where did it come from? The back elast jacket has been a, a long term project of mine. A very expensive one because yeah. there was nine prototypes to get exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I started to realise the deterioration in posture examining globally. Uh, of course there's more online and they're like this at school. Yeah. The first thing they do at the ballet bar is arm one, two. And it was shoulders. Shoulders were coming hunched. forward and yeah. hunched. Yeah. So I thought they need help with proprioception. So I never advocate that they train in this all day. It's setting up the proprioceptors in the body. We looked into a fabric that was breathable and elastic inside it that was comfortable, mm -hmm. not abrasive on the skin and so these are strategically placed you know how the physiotherapist tapes yeah so they're like the taping mm -hmm. inside that's would support their neck or yep. their, their shoulders to pull back that's right to pull it i uh, see so the, the the thoracic needs to not go back and wing but go down down and out yeah and then this gives support in the lats mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then this just goes around the rib cage to remind them not to rib flare. Okay, if yeah. they take a so, combre, a lot of them just lose their ribs, yeah. which then puts pressure in the lower disc. It has the just the reminders of the, the curve of the arm. So, so that's just, a support? Yeah. All underneath? All underneath. Wow. And, and it looks beautiful on as well. They come in sizes from um, the child six up to the, the male um, professionals. My students all wear them for let's, warm up let's for show the PPT. The viewers. So it's literally almost like a wraparound. I teach an hour of PPT and then they take the jacket off and go straight into ballet. So that's how ah. I work. Surprisingly, um, nurses have been buying it to wear under their uniform. Wow. Got a few hairdressers that yes. wear it. Wow. Uh, uh, a lady in, a, in Canada who bought one for a 12 year old daughter and she has a job where she's like this and she gets migraines. So she bought one and then she sent an email and bought another because she said I've got to have it on while the other one's on the line. A lady who is a professional equestrian from Serbia no way. Serbia. <laughs> jumping with a back elast. And her posture's fantastic. Yeah, see, her back's going to last <laughs> forever. Yeah. If you want your back to last, get yourself a back elast. <laughs>
<laughs> we have a fun little segment. I know. <laughs> it's called the Shutter Speed Challenge. Have you have you um prepared? <laughs> okay, so a little bit of fun. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. Okay, let's go for it. Last song you listened to. Perfect by Ed Sheeran. What's your favorite thing about being creative? Seeing what you've created on the stage mm. to the music and the joy in the students. Person you'd most like to meet? Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> what would you ask him? His music tells a story. Mm. What motivates him? If you had to label creativity with a colour, what colour would you choose? For the girls, hot pink. Yeah. <laughs> and for the men, deep burgundy. What would you miss most about the arts? Oh, everything. I can't live without the arts. What's on your bedside table? It's Beautiful. the little beetle that yeah. was given to me. I, I mean, I have my children's photos, yes. our wedding photo, and this little beetle from Julie Wells. What chore do you most dislike doing? My <laughs> husband's the cook. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, he just says, get out of my kitchen. <laughs> In one word, what does the arts mean to you? Dedication. Oh my gosh, Marie, having the opportunity to sit across from you and listen and just really step into your world and how much you have contributed, not just to the arts, but to society. Because without the arts, we'll just shrivel. It's so important. It's so important. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at our next episode.